general feeling in the armed forces is that uh, the training on the simulator needs to be validated in actual field. So they are doing 20, 30, 40, 45, 50 percent as of now. But eventually when the confidence keeps increasing, they will be able to get more uh, of the simulator like so maybe up to 80, 85. But eventually in some cases they may still say that 10 to 15 percent should be on uh, uh, actual equipment. So we will have to see how the process, the, but the point here is if the simulator is good and they gain confidence, they will use more of the simulator. When it is not engaged in real wars, the Indian Army spends most of its time in training. This training, however, comes at a considerable cost, not just in terms of equipment, ammunition, manpower, logistical and other costs, but also in terms of environmental damage and greenhouse gas emission. So it was apt that the Energy and Resources Institute, or TERI, released its report titled Supporting Armed Forces' Efforts Towards Sustainability, Application of Simulators in Military Training in New Delhi on the 5th of June, which is celebrated as World Environment Day. The unique 54-page report prepared after extensive research and study offers some startling conclusions. Apart from a dramatic cut in trading costs, simulation also reduces greenhouse gases, which cause climate change or global warming and damage to the soil caused by live rounds or shells hitting the earth. It also allows more people to be trained efficiently in a shorter period across various levels. As it was mentioned in the morning, now the government is also very keen since 2021 that they have to move into the world of simulators. So one is not just looking at the army, one is also looking at Air Force because in emissions, if we talk in terms of carbon emissions, they are far more from the aviation sector com compared to the army. So therefore we have to tackle that very seriously and so is the Navy. For example, the economic and environmental cost of operating 12 light four-wheel vehicles in a regiment for training over a period of 15 years is 4,37,953 rupees per annum. The same training on a simulator per annum costs a mere 29,196 rupees. But can simulators replace real training? Well, here's what we think is food for thought. If I have to train 800 soldiers or you know 5,000 soldiers, out of them, how many are going to get exposed to some part of the training right. on a simulator? After all, simulators can do this training and this training, but not this, this, this. Yes. So that is the 80-20. In a simulation training, right, where everybody is wearing a simulated uh, laser jacket and their enemy has also got a live uh, laser, now your drill changes. Now you can do actual practice of teamwork, of team training, you can do it. It is training your muscle memory, yes. It is allowing you to learn how to exploit the weapon, not just fire the weapon, but to exploit the weapon. You learn it very well. You hear the sound, you press the trigger, everything is real. The only thing is, there is no bullet which is going to hit somebody. The rest of it is all real. Team Bharat Shakti in New Delhi.